start by cordially thanking our hosts Eleni and Vasilis for the great hospitality. We are really happy to be here. And uh, yeah, since it's about the sandwiches, but even if it were not about the sandwiches, the, the whole conference, what we're going to be presenting now, it's not going to be, okay, I might say it's not going to be super content loaded, but actually it's going to be content loaded. It's a trifurcated, uh, or trifurcated, I don't know how to spell it right, assemblage in its own right, uh, where we're going to be slowly moving around it, uh, out of, uh, firstly, seven theses out of uh, at least a thousand, or 916 or something like that, thesis that kind of summarize on how what the colleges of architecture stand for. And then we're going to be going to a short, very short presentation of a, of a latest project that we're working on, and it's part of a, an assemblage in its own right, which is called Course, the collective uh, that is working on, but uh, more text oriented uh, project. And we're going to finish with the published work that we've been doing the last, uh, not only the last couple of years, but even more recently, the one that has been published some, some months ago. So if uh... yes, we start with the first head. First, just to explain what is it that we mean by uh, ecologies of architecture. What we certainly don't mean is the the three hugging pathos, the green going green, uh, but rather the ethico aesthetic paradigm. It is about uh, non-reducible, irreducible complexity and relationality. So nothing to do with sustainability in a very narrow sense. Not that we don't like it, but it's not what we do. So uh, we go now, I think, for the well, Some of us might not really like it, so <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. And yeah, I mean, out of, uh, out of pure habit, we're keeping our names. So yeah, his habit is to be called Andrew Altman. My habit is to be called Stavros. And they we're both uh, habitually working in Deagle Delft. So <laughs> going straight to the thesis now, I give you the floor for the first uh, 200 of them, right? Yes. Yeah. So, number one, the ecologies of architecture upholds Deleuze and Gattari's machinic conceptions of, of, of consistency, which is determined neither by the naive organic autonomy of the vitalist whole, nor by the crude reductionist expression of the whole in the sum of its mechanical parts. Machinism, or better maybe as Bernard Cash would say, machinism, entails the dark precursors zigzagging between the imminent limits of empathy and abstraction. And uh, mind you, I think it, we need to remind ourselves that by abstraction in the words we mean destratification. So perhaps we can go to number two. The ecologies of architecture starts from the hypothesis that the current digital term in architecture effectively reproduces the Cartesian duality of mind and body. It removes the mind from the concerns of coping with the environment and treats the body as no more than a kind of recording mechanism. The role of the body is relegated to converting the stimuli that impinge upon it into a data to be processed. So we, we continue to, to use this kind of computer metaphor. And that's why uh, we uh, exercise a little bit of uh, uh, symptomatology. We identify two problems, the uh, techno-determinism, as we just uh, uh, mentioned it, and, and on the other hand, uh, a, rem a so supposed remedy of relativism. So, this is number six. six normally, but now it goes to, to six, which six, is the normal three one. So, uh, so, so now first comes the crypto modern dominating abstraction. So, a parametricist fantasy is total formalization, which rests on the assumption of commensurability between digital data and the analog world. On the other hand, the crypto postmodern relativism is associated with, your, with the uh, neo phenomenologists who privilege the poetics poet of space, the subjective, the haptic, and similar empathic submissions. And you probably recognize whole Halasma Tumper formula there. Uh, so we, we go to the next one. Okay. If you, I mean, okay, if you want to interrupt on anything that seems to uh, absurd or direct, you might do direct now or wait for the conversation for us, I think both is fine. So architecture theorist Sanford Quinter recently reiterated Whitehead's critique of the reverse ontology. And by reverse ontology we mean substantialist conception of, of the subject. As Whitehead would have said, we should have called it a superject, not a subject. We don't, we don't start with the subject. Moreover, according to Quinter, the essential human engagement in the environment is geared towards extraction of sensory stimulation and <coughs> nutrition. 
This thesis reverses the orthodoxy of so-called urban metabolism that Pasquinelli has been writing about recently, with its presumed primacy of incorporation over sensation as the vehicle of our experience of the world. This is also, I, I think, uh, came up in the discussion at the uh, dinner that following Leibniz, it's not the point, it's not the subject that has a point of view, it's rather the point of view that has its own subject, or in general it has its own yeah. subject. And telling it a notes back, I mean, as a pre basic premise uh, that we try to follow is that the hylomorphic scheme, which is quite dominant within, uh, within architectural practice specifically, is nothing but the consequence of a whole, let's say, group of representational logics, which if it was not for the scheme, but uh, already in Platonism established between essences and being itself, then any kind of architectural, even illusion of a conceptual domination of a matter that is malleable would never have been possible. So, in that sense, we try to approach architecture not as a closed system, because closed systems are systems which are always governed by a form of linear causality. Architectural representation and architectural techniques being a closed system in their own right. But such closed systems are always ultra stable and they do not evolve. So even if we say that representation, for example, is autographic, allographic, or a curious mixture, it presents no possibilities of transformation to another system within its own closed limits. While on the other hand, what we're trying to do is to approach architecture as an open and non-linear metastable system, a system that can transform, for better or worse. So when metastability is interrupted, it is then that an individual, even in spatio-temporal terms, emerges and develops a structure alongside of an environment. In that sense, architectural representation, just an example of architectural techniques, is only one among many, probably even, agents in the process of spatialization, the production of space. And its potential productivity is not being based, it's being based actually on a metastable and open system that comes before it. It's undescended, as the Hamilton Grand would have it. So in that sense, architects do not project the space, do not even produce space. What they do is they disrupt spatial metastability. And effectively, since this is clearly influenced by Guattari, effectively what they're doing is they produce a people yet to come. They produce processes of subjectification. So to close this very brief uh, synopsis of some basic thesis of ours, in that sense we approach architecture genealogically as Simon Don would have it in the form of a reticular technicity, which evolves by a reciprocal concretization of technical objects, let's say a building, and a simultaneous generalization of its active pra practitioners, the architects or the users themselves. So we are no longer dealing with the application of transcendental design rules, not even with binaries in the form of digital analog, analog for example, but rather with abductive heuristics of affective techniques. No input or output, in the digital sense, but rather practices of sensorial amplification via material manipulation and vice versa. So that was the first... Uh, Fortification of the trifurcation. This is the, this is the second one, and it's a work in progress, so we could really use your, your feedback. Uh, it is um, the so title. Hand out some flyers now if you. So, so the, the title of this, uh, and this is, we, we paraphrase Deleuze paraphrasing Godard. Uh, it's uh, not just a compass, not a just compass, just compass, just a compass. And so to, uh, to uh, maybe emphasize this idea that we are trying to avoid the cliché, because thinking is obviously, as we know, not just uh, about applying about applying concepts. Uh, uh, this is a, a project uh, of a collective uh, of four, four, four people, that, uh, which includes uh, the graphic uh, designer head of the Royal Academy of uh, Arts in The Hague, the Netherlands, by the name of Niels Schrader, uh, our colleague artist, uh, Schurt, uh, one uh, older man and, and the two of us. Uh, so we got together and, uh, and this, is, this is what we want to uh, show you now. Uh, the, the first leg of this long journey is called uh, To Begin Anew. It's the official start of a long-term transdisciplinary project uh, that I just uh, uh, told you about. Uh, the idea is to diagram a becoming of influential vital concepts within the work of Gilles Villers. The collectives, the assemblages aim is to analyze the genealogy of, of these concepts which changed and transformed over time. The research project uh, makes extensive use of network analysis software by the name of Text Compass. This tool is designed for text analysis and networks visualization. It generates 
a hypergraph that you see here, uh, which uh, in turn visualizes connections between related words based on their semantic context. And here I want to pause for, for a little, and I'm now perhaps addressing Moses, and I'm not sure if I see him in the... Uh, yes, yes. Uh, you would like to say that maybe uh, there, is, there is a relation to your previous graph yes, uh, yeah, yeah. with, with the caveat that we prefer lines over points. Uh, that's well, a, uh, it's I, I was using the mathematical yes, yes, yes. And then, you know, you're, you're using some sort of interiority relationships here. We can discuss it later, it's fine, but I mean, uh, the point well, is that we can yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no, the, tec the technical aspects, I mean, we can discuss already the whole over, not overall not logics of it. But interior versus exterior relationships is not a technical issue, whatever. So we sorry. No, no, but for, for this particular presentation, the, we, we chose the first published text by Deleuze, uh, Desert Islands, and uh, it was, this was fed to the algorithm. And in the sense of beginning anew, for us to begin anew in, in, in that sense, without analyzing specifically now how the Desert Islands text was approached, what we wish to do is to, same as the Desert Island in the Deleuzean text, is necessary as the minimum in order to begin anew. <coughs> What survives the first origin and catalyzes reproduction in a way, I mean, a repetition that includes already some difference. We also wish to tap into the conceptual agency of a diagramming, which by no means is directed by any conscious intention. And that was Andrew's point about points versus lines. We prefer lines. So, through the use of the text compass software, we do not aim to represent what supposedly lies already there, so coming with an anthropocentric, let's say, agency and making the connections afterwards, which all of them might have the same weight even. Rather, we aim to present the encounter between a transformative potential of a second conceptual origin, as itself presented in an algorithmic, non-anthropocentric cartography. So it's always relations that produce the terms, and not the other way around, and they're highlight, highlighted and path away to begin anew, in that sense. That, that's so, when the reaction, because it is about the externality of relations. In, in, in its technical aspect, I mean, the first, okay, the first inner ring contains the, and I'll show you here, but contains it the, most, this one. Yeah, the most frequently used words, while the outer ones, going to the, uh, to the right, contain the, contain the ones when they appear in neighborhoods, in services, and in whole paragraphs. But the important thing for us was what appears when simultaneously at the center, the relationships between the words are presented based on the contextual affinities, on semantic context. <coughs> so it is at this moment that one can swiftly move from context to content, not the other way around, where the transformative potential of Deleuze's own text, of Deleuze's own desert text, actually, erupts since what immediately here appears as an image of thought, the connections between words which are seemingly unrelated, unrelated, forces thought itself to recount its capacity for an absolute survey, as Ruhr would have it. And in that sense, it's not that it's just, just points which were pre, let's say, pre-selected, pre-figured from a dictionary, for example, without any intention to be polemic here. It's not just points that apparently will be later on connected, it's points where were not selected by us, they would happen to be appearing the most frequent in the text, and then it's not that they're just merely connected with the line. Each of these lines has a non anthropocentric again, agency in the sense that it traces down, or even better, it diagrams. How many times these words appear, and how many times they're hyperlinked with other words, then thus giving from a contextual to a conceptual agency, which again, it can in a way be I wouldn't call it a simulation, but it's, let's say, an isom isomorphism between an absolute survey that is thought capacity, thought's capacity, and the algorithmic capacity of the, of the software itself. So the, uh, the, the, you could say that the value of these algorithmically, algorithmically generated, that is to say, non-anthropocentric compasses, lies in their vari variables and in the maximum of variables that they allow. The overall ambition of ours is to map the becoming of the concepts so as to engender thinking within thought by way of creating an image that is not a cliché. As Dan Smith aptly put it in his eighth essay in, uh, on the list, and I quote him, the task of creation amounts to a constant and ever-renewed struggle against the reign of clichés in order to extract singularities from which thought, flow, uh, thought flows and make them function consistently and as, as, sorry, sorry, as variabilities on a new plane of creation, end of, end of quote. So, so the general scope of this project, we will rely on Manuel's uh, ontological list from the appendix of his seminal intensive science and uh, virtual the last page of this flyer also. Yes. Uh, 
so the, 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 in the, the course collective, as we call ourselves, uh, we are set to demonstrate that although concepts have no identity, they do retain a consistency, the internal variability. Crucially, such an approach takes the concept to be an open-ended multiplicity with the potentials for bridges, providing links or crossroads to other kindred concepts, including those that are yet to be created for a people yet to come. So, closing off with a more uh, opportunistic uh, head of, of uh, assemblies, which is a uh, recently and not so recently published work. Uh, yeah, there is indeed, uh, I mean, it's not that we're coming out of, uh, of nowhere, ex nihilo, there is a legacy in what we're doing. There used to be a, a group of people which is now dismantled, or at least out of 12, there are three remaining there, and it used to be called the DSD, the Dutch School of Design, and it has published uh, over the well, better part of more than a decade, a decade, 11 years actually, books that apply, try to, to approach architectural theory and architectural practices, but also expand be, beyond them. One of them, the middle one, I think, the one with the number six, the Cognitive Architecture, I think also John was, uh, was participating in that. So, uh, apart from uh, the legacy, the supposed legacy, there's also an ongoing uh, project which uh, runs from the DSD time up to now and hopefully will keep on uh, running for uh, as much as we can uh, sustain it, uh, which is the Footprint, Delft uh, Architectural Theory uh, Journal. And it's, uh, you can find some copies which they are free to take if you are interested in any, uh, any of them outside here on the table. Again, its, co it's scope is uh, widely research-based but covering, uh, covering many different uh, issues and topics. It's uh, open access, you can uh, download it freely online and if you find any call for papers uh, that's interesting uh, in, your, uh, in your own research, yeah, feel free to submit anything. We publish twice a year. Yeah, well, amazing. Yeah, if things work out well, it's autumn and spring. If not, it's autumn and spring. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And so this is the latest, let's say, attempt of ours? Yeah. It's, uh, we call it 3C, Critical and Clinical Cartographies. Uh, and we consider this project to be our most significant post-DSD work. It sets the, the, the bar for the chair to, uh, to... We have the ambition of maybe putting field health uh, architecture theory back on the map. Uh, the project was uh, very enthusiastically embraced by and supported by the Edinburgh University Press. 3C is the second issue in the new series of EUP uh, by the name of New Materialism. Uh, sorry, New Materialism, as in plural. In contrast to old materialism, New Materialism, now at, at its most elementary, opposes anthropocentrism and recasts subjectivity as a process, emphasizes the power of heterogenesis, that is to say, talks about the coexistence of becomings, and rethinks the sources of ethics beyond the axiomatic or a priori of morality. What our 3C project contributes to the series, and, and this is what we believe it, and we, we, may, we may claim, is a take on the unconscious of architecture, which is both emergent and constructive. It is always already a social setup, the collective annunciation. I think something that uh, Andrew uh, already uh, kind of, uh, pointed to in, in his talk. Uh, so, so this unconscious of architecture is the result of, you could say, a competence without comprehension that got us from <coughs> bacteria to Bach, to, to, to uh, quote the latest Tenet's uh, book. I think, uh, you know, the reference to bacteria maybe also goes back to John's uh, uh, talk when he mentions uh, Lynn Margulis and the and bacteria. So new, uh, new materialism series editors are two prominent Dutch feminists. Iris van der Town and Rosie Braidotti. The forthcoming, just for your information, the forthcoming uh, third issue is, uh, the title is Architectural Materialisms, Non-Human Creativity, and it will be edited by Maria Boyatsky, who I believe some of you... Boyatsky. Oh, sorry, Boyatsky, sorry, Boyatsky. Uh, so, critical and clinical cartographies. Uh, this is the, uh, the cover page. Uh, is about the critical affirmation of difference in itself and its clinical repetition for itself. And please note the copula and, and the plural cartographies, which are both, as we know, secrets of empiricism. They are meant to convey the adapted, adopted, non-totalizing, unexact, yet, yet rigorous approach. The, the, the very subtitle uh, reveals the fourfold structure of the book. It's about, it contains architecture, robotics, medicine, and philosophy. It is a transdisciplinary project 
which crosses, and not interdisciplinary, which crosses disciplinary boundaries, but starts from the milieu of architecture. It is an exercise in meta-modeling in, in Italian terms, uh, hence the third C, that of cartographies. The, the scope of mapping is reflected in the title of, of the preface, uh, which is called uh, The Four Domains of the Plane of Consistency. And now, curious, I mean, uh, this takes us back to the very first uh, keynote of my manual, because it's the same uh, diagram. So we start from the domain of existence, which is the lower right <coughs> border. Umwelt, in Weird School's terms, it, these are architectural, architectural theories. But we cannot afford to stay there because then we will be threatened, uh, uh, we might be facing the danger of uh, what Deleuze and Gattari called the black hole, when it completely coincides with your surrounding. So in order to escape that, we need to go up to the uh, extent to the values and references. This is the deterritorializing move to the universe, to the universes mm -hmm. of, of references or values. In our case, it's philosophical universes, marked by the you. And further still, from the material, that is to say the, the right column, to the disc discursive or expressive uh, uh, domains of both medical flows and robotic phyla. So what, we, what, what we're doing here is uh, is, is uh, well, uh, following the, the idea that there is a move that uh, uh, deterritorializes the material part, the critical part of the diagram, and that decodes, uh, but uh, all four of them together in some way uh, uh, point to the, the necessity to understand the, the, every, all this diagram in terms of the entanglement of vicarious causation, which, where we have like the, the, the quasi-efficient territory, the quasi-final universe of, of values, the quasi-material quasi flows and quasi-formal phyla. Uh, so uh, earlier, as, as you might have remembered, uh, uh, noticed that we have, uh, I mean, this is the unconscious of architecture, what, what we were referring to. So it is to do with the ecological desiring as opposed to ego, logical, volition. And it's machinically unconscious in a way. So it's, machine, exactly, yeah. machine, so it's the desire, uh, with, with, uh, of course, the desire to be everything that occurs at the level before we can differentiate between subjects and, and objects. Uh, yeah. No, we're closing it in, in less than a minute. Literally. For real, for real. <laughs> I'm not joking. The thing is that, yeah, just to make it the last, last comment in a way, I mean, what, what we're concerned, and that's why, I mean, the unconscious uh, touch into it, what we call as imagination, and we have it even in the sense of dreaming yesterday or, uh, or in the sense of images and imagining, let's say, for us is quite overrated in the sense that, yeah, we often hear that imagination might probably be your own limit, which we take as something wrong in the sense that recently Benjamin Breton uh, has cautioned us that, and I start to quote him with my own interferences in there, but if we really want transformation, then we have to transversally slow between and through the hard stuff. And this hard stuff is actually history, philosophy, economics, art, contradictions and opportunities. So if we bracket it off to the side, focusing just on technology or just on innovation, as we might hear recent, recently, or not only recently, but also in the past, but quite more often lately, within architectural theories and their practices, actually prevents transformation. So instead of dumping down the future to the fact of just imagining it, we need to raise the future already, in a virtual way, to the level of the complexity of the systems that already embody, and embody us as well. We are embedded in them, and they embed us as well. So this is not about any kind of personal story of inspiration, any form of narrative, let's say. It's about the difficult and uncertain work of a demystification and a simultaneous re-singularization, a reconceptualization, let's say, of the really hard stuff, but really actually can change how we think alongside the world. Literally, the last sentence conclusion, false modesty aside, this is what the 3C project and ecologies of architecture in general are set to do, to change or, or at least challenge the way we think. There is no more pressing task in the Trumpy, truthy, Brexity world that we live in. Thank you so much for your attention.